Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this session, I, I've got uh, many requests asking about the important questions uh, from the remaining portions after doing uh, the important questions from embryology session. So in this session, I'm planning to just discuss about uh, the important questions from the head and neck region. I've been following uh, the textbook of anatomy by Vishram Singh sir for a longer period. And the book which I'm having now is the third edition by Vishram Singh sir. Uh, so let's start. So chapter 2, from the chapter 2 we will start. Uh, in the chapter 2 some of the important things you should be knowing are, uh, it is mainly osteology. So you, for the theory part you need not mug up more on the osteology portion except for some important landmarks like Tyrion. Tyrion you should be knowing uh, because that is a favorite quest, short, uh, short question. Then uh, uh, you should be knowing the differences between the male and female skull. Sometimes uh, due to the new pattern of MCI, you might get questions from that. Uh, so that again you should be knowing. Uh, then about the fontanelle, the anterior and posterior fontanelle, the bregma lambda like that, you should be knowing. Uh, then about uh, the mandible, the difference between the male and female mandible, you should be knowing. Uh, age changes also about the mandible because all these can be asked as a short note. Then fractures about uh, fractures of maxilla then you should be knowing the lay foot 1, 2 and 3 uh, that also you can expect uh, as a short note. Then coming to the vertebra in the vertebral portion and the cervical vertebra uh, you can expect a short note on the first cervical vertebra or you can expect a short note on the second cervical vertebra because they are very important uh, cervical vertebrae like atlas and axis you can expect a short note on that so these are the important points from osteology you should know for the theory exam for practical of course you need to know the entire thing but for theory exam all these can be asked as a short note coming to the next chapter chapter 3 the scalp temple and face Scalp is a favorite question for essay as well as for short note. So uh, the definition and extent, uh, the layers of scalp, the blood supply, the nerve supply, all these can be asked as a uh, diagram or as a short note or as an essay. So scalp is very, very important. Please don't skip this portion. And also the applied anatomy of the scalp, the dangerous layer of the scalp, uh, like that also you have to know. Then uh, some of the important uh, short notes which you can expect from this are, uh, you again, uh, you'll be asked to write uh, a short note on the facial uh, muscles, the expressions uh, caused by these facial muscles. So you need to know the important expression, say five or six expressions, and you need to know which are the muscles related to that expression. That that is also very important. And among the facial muscles, in detail, you need to know orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, buccinator. So these three muscles can be asked as a short note as well, orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris and buccinator. Then of course the nerve supply, uh, the blood supply of face, the nerve supply of face, uh, very very important, the sensory as well as motor nerve supply. Then applied aspect in from that is Bell's palsy, Bell's palsy is again a favorite short note. Uh, then uh, coming to the venous drainage. Uh, you should be knowing the formation of the retromandibular vein. Uh, that's again a favorite question. Facial artery can be also asked as a short note. Then the eyelid, the different layers of eyelid, you should be knowing. Then the lacrimal apparatus, that is also a short note. Then the parasympathetic innervation. Parasympathetic innervation of all the salivary glands and the lacrimal gland, that pathway you should be definitely knowing. That's very, very important. Then uh, coming to the next chapter that is skin superficial fascia and deep fascia. Uh, among that the platysma, the muscle platysma is a favorite question. Uh, then coming to the deep fascia, again the deep fascia of neck uh, is a very favorite question. Fascia collar, you should be knowing the uh, different name for the deep fascia that is the fascia collar. So the three uh, different uh, lay uh, layers, the investing layer, the pretracheal layer and the prevertebral layer. You should be knowing to uh, draw the diagram of these layers as well. So uh, in the previous session also I have already told 
when you take one chapter select three or four diagrams which you can be uh, easily drawing for any of the topics asked from that chapter so when you study that diagram it will be easy for you uh, when you are asked to write a short note on any uh, topics related to that okay so the deep fascia is again very important and then the deep fascia again carotid sheath alone can be asked as a short short note the relations of the carotid sheath and the contents of the carotid sheath very very important then coming to the triangles of neck triangles of neck is usually uh, a practical topic but still uh, when you come to the triangle sternocleidomastoid is a very favorite question and in the sternocleidomastoid uh, the clinical correlation in the clinical correlation torticol is our right neck uh, that is again a favorite question then uh, coming to the posterior triangle uh, it can be asked as a diagram like uh, the subdivisions of the posterior triangle uh, what are the structures forming the floor of the posterior triangle like that you can expect so there are beautiful diagrams given in in this book uh, if you just study these two diagrams if you flip these uh, diagrams before the exam day uh, it will be easy for you to remember the entire topic in detail now coming to the uh, anterior region of neck anterior region of neck uh, you should be knowing about the digastric uh, muscles the digastric muscle again is a very sh favorite short note then you should be knowing about the two important triangles here as uh, the, uh, the they are the digastric triangle and the carotid triangle okay so in the anterior triangle uh, you should be knowing these two triangles in detail you should be knowing how to draw these two triangles digastric and the carotid triangle now coming to the uh, the details of the triangle uh, one important short note from this chapter is a short note on ansa cervicalis ansa cervicalis you should be knowing the formation so again if you draw this diagram everything is mentioned in this and uh, you know uh, you can uh, just by one look if you, if you have studied this diagram it will be easy for you to know uh, how is it formed and what are the branches arising from it how to write an exam i will be giving a separate session but for the time being you just know which are the important topics then coming to the back of neck back of neck is not not that uh, favorite for most of the examiners but suboccipital region the suboccipital triangle since it is not a topic uh, which you can expect for the practical session because it is very difficult to identify the structures in the practical session in that case you can expect a short note uh, from this chapter that is a suboccipital triangle the theory portion you can expect suboccipital triangle as a short note then uh, uh, the joints of the neck uh, you can expect uh, the first and the craniovertebral joints the atlanto uh, occipital joints and the atlanto axial joints okay these two joints are usually asked the atlanto occipital and atlanto axial joint you, you have to study uh, the joints the ligaments and the movements occurring at that point uh, then hangman's fracture can be asked as a one mark question uh, then coming to the parotid region again parotid gland is a very favorite question uh, the relations of the parotid gland you can uh, very easily draw this diagram which is a very uh, easy schematic diagram and everything is mentioned in this single diagram you need uh, you can easily understand which are the structures leaving the different borders of the parotid gland from the single diagram and again parotid gland it can be asked as an uh, essay as well as short note the fear, external features the relations the nerve supply the uh, parasympathetic, parasympathetic secretomotor fibers uh, how are they uh, entering and the applied aspect the uh, different applied aspects of the parotid gland like mumps the, the, the severe painful swelling in the parotid region like that uh, you can expect uh, from this chapter now uh, another thing which you can expect here is Frey syndrome okay so Frey syndrome uh, it can be asked as a short note as well as an essay topic that also you, you need to know so everything about parotid gland and once a uh, parotid duct itself is alone parotid duct alone was asked as a short note so parotid gland that chapter you should not leave uh, you have to know the entire relation how the gland is seated uh, its innervation and the blood supply everything you should be knowing and the applied aspect mainly mums and the um, uh, parotid 
uh, the Frey syndrome. Okay, so that also you need to know. Then the parasympathetic innervation I have already mentioned, the secretomotor fibers. ITT lower, the otic ganglia, I have done a session on it. If you uh, want to check, you can go and check. Then coming to the submandibular region, in the submandibular region, uh, the important questions you can expect are uh, the hyoglossus muscle. Okay, the hyoglossus muscle and its relation in the form of diagram or short note you can expect. Uh, then uh, some important things like the submandibular gland, then the nerve supply, uh, all these are favorite questions from this region. Then. Uh, the submandibular gland, uh, the applied aspect also, the, uh, something about the bimanual palpation you should be knowing, how you are, how, how you can distinguish between the swelling arising from the submandibular gland and lymph node, that is again a favorite question. You can read the clinical correlation uh, in the box given and the parasympathetic innervation of the submandibular gland, that is also very important. And the submandibular ganglion. Uh, then. Uh, Coming to the chapter 10, it is the infratemporal fossa, TM joint and tergopalatine fossa. Infratemporal fossa, again uh, a very favorite question. Uh, you should know the boundaries and contents of the infratemporal fossa. Then sometimes maxillary artery alone can be asked as a short note. Uh, similarly, mandibular nerve alone can be asked as a short note. Then uh, TM joint is an essay question. O otic ganglion can be asked as a short note. Uh, so, tic ganglion, uh, if you remember this diagram, it will be very easy for you to understand its innervation. Uh, then TM joint can be asked as an essay. So, you need to know the important ligaments and muscles concerned with it, the movements and uh, the relations, the important relations, very, very important. So, you might get a get an essay like a dislocation of the TM joint uh, like that, you might get an essay or uh, you can even expect a short note. Then muscles of mastication. Uh, that is also a very favorite question. Then coming to the uh, tergopalatine fossa, the tergopalatine fossa uh, compared to the rest of the topics, it's not that favorite, but tergopalatine ganglion you can uh, study. You need not go and mug up the tergopalatine fossa in detail, but tergopalatine ganglion uh, you can read in detail. Then coming to the thyroid gland, thyroid gland again like the parotid gland. Uh, very very important you have to know, uh, know the entire thing uh, the different parts blood supply nerve supply uh, the relations uh, like that you should know then the applied aspect retrosternal goiter goiter as such it can be the presenting complaint uh, in a structured essay so you need to know the uh, goiter and its associated uh, pressure effects like that you have to know then uh, thyroglossal fistula, uh, whenever you study any systemic region like any gland or anything, you have to know the embryology as well, the systemic embryology part you have to study along with it. Okay, So whichever organ or whichever part you take, you should know the embryological origin uh, from where it is arising that is usually asked along with it. Then coming to the parathyroid gland. In parathyroid uh, gland again uh, the location of parathyroid gland and the nerve supply is usually favorite question uh, for the examiners. Now uh, coming to the next chapter pre and paravertebral regions, pre and paravertebral region uh, the scalenae muscles, the scalenus anterior, medius and posterior, scalenae muscles together uh, once asked as a short note uh, like that is, uh, you sc the scalene triangle, the subclavian triangle was also asked once. Then uh, the cervical plexus, cervical plexus and phrenic nerve, phrenic nerve, cervical plexus, the scalene muscles, these are the favorite questions from this region. Uh, then of course the sympathetic ganglia, cervical sympathetic ganglia, the superior, middle and inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia, that again is a favorite question. Uh, then coming to the oral cavity, uh, oral cavity, the dental correlation is not a favorite question for MBBS topic, uh, MBBS uh, undergraduates. Now coming to the tongue, tongue again a very favorite question, especially the nerve supply and the different parts of the tongue, uh, the muscles of the tongue uh, and its uh, uh, lymphatic drainage, it can be asked asked as a structured essay as well, uh, you have to remember along with the developmental correlation, uh, that's very very important. 
then uh, coming to the pharynx and palate you should know how the pharynx is divided nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx sometimes a short note will be asked write a short note on nasopharynx write a short note on oro and uh, write a short note on laryngopharynx that is very very important uh, then another important question in this region is uh, you will be asked to write a short note on eustachian tube then the constrictors of pharynx again a favorite question constrictor muscles of pharynx then um, palatine tonsil of course a very favorite question the tonsilla bed uh, you should be uh, knowing this diagram uh, because it's a very easy schematic representation uh, where you can uh, show the tonsilla bed that will be asked as a part of essay also then the arterial supply of tonsil this again uh, was once asked then eustachian tube i have already mentioned you need to know a uh, how to write a short note on eustachian tube uh, coming to the palate, palate again the, so, the muscles of palate, uh, the five pairs of muscles that is usually asked. Then the development of palate, that is a favorite question from palate. Uh, the varieties of cleft palate, cleft palate, cleft lip, uh, the development of palate, these all go hand in hand. Now coming to the next chapter, chapter 15, it is larynx. Larynx again it can be asked as an essay as well as short note so in the larynx you need to know again just like pharynx you need to know the subdivisions very thoroughly then the laryngeal cartilages the laryngeal muscles movement and nerve supply that's very very important so when you study the laryngeal cartilages you should know uh, in detail about the thyroid cartilage uh, as well as uh, arytenoid and cricoid cartilage so uh, thyroid, arytenoid and cricoid, if you know this diagram and this diagram uh, where uh, the muscles are uh, shown, the attachments of muscles are shown, then it will be easy for you to score high marks. Then uh, the intrinsic uh, ligaments, ligaments of larynx and the muscles of larynx, again very very important. Uh, then uh, the laryngeal nerve, the nerve supply of larynx, both sensory as well as motor and uh, what will happen if there is damage to, uh, of recurrent laryngeal nerve damage of external laryngeal nerve like that you might get sub questions in a structured essay then laryngocele that is also a favorite question now uh, coming to the next chapter that is blood supply and lymphatic drainage of head and neck uh, in that chapter uh, you can expect a short note about vertebral artery Okay, so the vertebral artery, how it uh, takes its origin, how is it traveling al along the neck and how is it entering into the cranial cavity. Uh, that is a very favorite question and uh, one syndrome, subclavian steel syndrome associated with it. If you know this diagram, it will be easy for you to remember that topic, subclavian steel syndrome. That's again a favorite question. Then external carotid artery and its branches. Uh, you know, one, two, three, the different branches arising from the external carotid artery. That is again a very important uh, question then uh, coming to the veins internal jugular vein is a favorite question coming uh, when you compare with the rest of the veins internal jugular vein you need to know carotid sheet we have already mentioned and then uh, one important topic is styloid apparatus you should be knowing about the styloid apparatus then uh, when you discuss about the lymphatic drainage of uh, head and neck you should be knowing about the valdez ring in detail and the different levels of lymphatic drainage uh, that is also very very important so in the clinical correlation box all the levels from level 1 to level 7 is very beautifully narrated uh, you can just have a look so lymphatic drainage again is a very important topic coming to the nose and paranasal sinuses uh, as far as head and neck is concerned whichever topic you take it is very important we cannot omit anything so know something about everything that is the easiest way uh, to get uh, good marks because you need not uh, have to leave any question unattempted that is the first and foremost point so in the nasal cavity uh, you, you should know everything about the nasal septum and lateral wall uh, lateral wall uh, in detail and when you talk about nasal septum the components of nasal septum especially uh, along with the nerve supply and blood supply if you just uh, have a look at the diagram where the nerve supply and blood supply are shown uh, then it will be easy for you, you need not know uh, the entire write up the day before the exam you just focus on those diagrams that will help you to uh, 
complete your revision. Then the openings of the lateral wall of nose, then the clinical correlation, the little area, the kiesel back plexus, that also you have to know. Then among the paranasal air sinuses, you should be able to name the sinuses uh, and in detail about the maxillary sinus compared to the rest of the sinus, maxillary sinus, maxillary sinusitis, how will you drain the maxillary sinus, uh, everything is given in the clinical correlation box, you can go through that. Coming to the ear, uh, the external auditory meatus uh, can be asked. The tympanic membrane, again very favorite question, both embryology as well as the structure of the tympanic membrane, you should be knowing. Uh, then uh, subdivisions of middle ear, very very favorite question. Uh, then uh, the ear ossicles alone can be asked as a short note, the different joints between the ear ossicles. Internal ear you just know how it is made up of internal ear is not a favorite question as far as undergraduates are concerned so you need not mug much on the internal ear compared to the external and middle ear I'm not saying that internal ear won't be asked but if you are in a hurry you can um, just know about the framework of the internal ear and you need not uh, bother much about the internal ear then coming to the orbit and eyeball orbit of course uh, if you just study the schematic representation it will be easy for you to know the boundaries of the orbit uh, then uh, especially the contents then the extraocular muscles and their movement uh, with an easy schematic diagram extraocular muscles very very favorite question always asked uh, with the nerve supply then ciliary ganglion again a short note then coming to the eyeball uh, you should be knowing about the structure of retina, uh, it's mainly microscopic structure which we usually study. If you study that, you can even uh, write gross as well. Uh, then about the vertebral canal and its contents, when you talk about the vertebral canal and its contents, you should be knowing about the uh, epidural space uh, and the meningeal layers. I think uh, up to chapter 19, uh, you can consider it as belonging to head and neck. And from 20 onwards, it is vertebral canal, cranial cavity. And uh, I think we will be discussing the important topics uh, with respect to the session neuroanatomy. So till chapter 19, you can consider it as belonging to head and neck. So these are the important topics. Uh, whenever you take one topic, takes three or four diagrams from that chapter, which can be easily drawn whenever some topics are asked. Okay. And you just focus on the important uh, topics, which I have just uh, mentioned and of course uh, when you come across some other topics in between just make sure that you can write at least five points or five words related to that don't just skip the entire topic because uh, we don't know how the examiner feels when he sits to put questions right so don't uh, leave any topic unattended uh, without reading if you just go through the heading if you think like uh, you don't know anything about it just pick five words related to it so that you need not uh, skip that question when asked for the exam so that's about uh, the important questions from head and neck region if you are interested i will be doing session on neuroanatomy and the remaining gross anatomy topics and histology thank you thanks for watching